Today, I want to talk to you about automation, specifically how we can do it inside WordPress, but also a little bit in a more broad scale. But first of all, you may be asking, what exactly is automation, Paul? Well, let me just break it down into a simple, straightforward way of thinking about it. Normally, when you use something like WooCommerce, someone purchases a product and there's a certain level of automation that goes on inside WooCommerce. Emails are sent out, stock is taken away, those kinds of things. And that's great. But what about if you want to connect WooCommerce to something like your mailing list supplier, or you may want to update something like a Google Sheet? How could you do that? Well, this is where a tool like Uncanny Automator comes in. And today we're going to take a quick look over that. Now, I covered Uncanny Automator when it was first released probably about two years ago, but it's moved on quite a lot since then. And I want to come back and revisit it. I've also got the pro version today, which opens up more options. But on top of that, I want to kind of talk about just automation in a more broad scope, because this is something that I want to cover in future videos where we take a look at how we can link multiple different platforms together to create a unified system that when something happens here, other things happen along the line without our involvement, keeping those things up to date. This is something that I've been using myself at the end of 2021, and I have found it incredibly useful to just make sure that everything talks to each other and my life just becomes just a little bit more simple and straightforward. So let's take a look first of all at Uncanny Automator. Let's see how it works. And then I just cover some of the other automation tools we can use. Some of them have costs, but you can also use free versions to get some really simple things in place to kind of test the waters to see if they work the way that you want. So let's start off, like you say, with Uncanny Automator. So first of all, let's just take a quick look at the Uncanny Automator website. So Uncanny Automator comes in two flavors. You have a free version, which has a limited scope, but again, one of those things that's worth checking out to see how it works, to see if it gets the way that you want it to, kind of gets you where you want to go with it. Okay, so you can see we can do things like we can connect various different plugins and applications. And this is the nice thing about automation. It's not limited to the WordPress ecosystem. You can connect this up to so many other platforms out there. You can then automate things. There's no code involved in this. You can get rid of any developer requirements to get people in to make these things all talk to each other. You can replace lots of different expensive tools and you can ultimately save time, effort and money. So you can see that everything is done through recipes. We set up a trigger, the trigger triggers an action and then something happens. That's basically all the automation is. And you can see we can connect up to things like WV Forms, LearnDash, WordPress and so on. But we could also link up to things like Zapier or Zapier, depending upon where you are. And we'll take a quick look at Zapier a little later so we can see how that works. So we can automate various different things. We can connect this up to things like Google Sheets, Contact Form 7, MailChimp, those kinds of things. There's quite a few different integrations inside Uncanny Automator. And you can see we can do things like when users complete a course inside LearnDash, we want to do something else with them. We might want to trigger something in a Google Sheet. So there's lots of different things. And when you use an Uncanny Automator, you can also use recipes. And recipes are basically just a set of actions, triggers and actions that do something. So it makes your process of doing this a little easier where you don't need to create every single step. You just need to fill out some of the basic information and then everything else is kind of handled for you. So these are just quick ways of getting started. Okay, so that's a brief overview of what Uncanny Automator is. Let's hop over now into WordPress and take a look at the options. So I've already gone ahead and installed everything. Now, like I say, this is the pro version, but pretty much everything works in fundamentally the same way. You just may have slightly less options for the different kinds of automations you may want to carry out. So you can see once we install this, we get a dashboard, which gives us a basic overview of all the different things we have, the credits we have in our account, get started guides, some knowledge base information. So if you want to kind of get a feel for how something works, there might be a knowledge base article already on it, frequently asked questions, those kinds of things. So again, there's some nice video tutorials inside here, so I would recommend checking those out to get a kind of feel for this. Then we can hop over into the recipes. Now the recipes, like I said at the beginning of this video, are basically just the entire process, the trigger, the action. This is where we can create them. So let's take a look at adding a new recipe in and see how this all kind of works. So we go ahead and add a new recipe. And when that opens up, we're given two options. Do we want to use this for logged in users? So you have to be logged into the site for this recipe, this action trigger, those kinds of things to actually work. Or is this going to be for everybody? So anybody that visits your site, whether they're logged in or logged out. For this example, we're going to say for everyone. We'll confirm that option. Now, the real reason for this is you get different options based upon if someone's logged out or for everybody. So 
experiment with these to see the differences between them and the different options they may open up. So first thing I'm gonna do is give this a title. We're gonna call this sample recipe. Next up, we've got the trigger. And like I say, everything is broken down to triggers and actions. So we can break this down based upon automator, Elementor, so if you're using Elementor, you can trigger various different things like form submissions and so on. Integromat, if you're using that, which is another kind of form of connecting external services up to your website. So you can kind of link Uncanny Automator to another set of automation tools using Integromat. And the same kind of thing goes with Zapier or Zapier. It does the same kind of thing. WooCommerce and WordPress. So let's take a look at WooCommerce because I've already got that installed and I kind of want to use that as the backdrop for this example. So now we've chosen that, that opens up a set of triggers. And you can see, we can say, a guest completes, pays for, lands on a thank you page for an order with a product. A guest completes, pays for, lands on a page, an order, a product in a category. So various different actions can happen, or various different triggers can happen to cause an action to run. Hope that makes sense. So let's just say we've got something like a product has an associated order, so we say, a guest completes page for lands on a thank you page for an order or a product. So we select that option. You can see that now goes off and says, what's the actual trigger action? So it says paid for, but we can open that up. We can say pays for, completes, or lands on a thank you page for something. So we'll say, we'll go for pays for. We can say save on that. And you can see now it says any product. So we could have this to be globally affecting our WooCommerce store, or we can get very specific about a certain product. So you can really get very granular in what you can do with these kinds of tools. And as you can see, all of the different products that I have in my store are located inside here. So I can simply come in and choose the product or products that I want. For this example though, let's just say any product. So at the moment we're saying a guest, so someone that's not logged in, pays for an order with a product, and we're gonna say any product. So again, we'll hit save on there, and we're just basically building this trigger out, fleshing out the various different parts of the trigger that once that's completed, and once all those conditions are met, then the action will run. Okay, so we've now said a guest pays for an order with any product, so global. You can see it's currently live, but we could, if we want to, disable this at any point, so we could leave it in our dashboard, but disable it so we don't want to use it. So now we set up the trigger, we now need to go ahead and just choose what action, what happens. So we'll click add action. And you can see now we've got various different options. Some of these are not connected because these are sort of third party API driven tools. So things like active campaign, if you use that for your email marketing, MailChimp, those kinds of things. So this is great if someone purchased a product and then you wanted to add them to a mail sequence as part of your mailing campaign, you know, with active campaign or MailChimp or something. So once they bought that, then they get added to that and then you can start to send them emails. Obviously you could, if you wanted to, use something like Slack. So you may want to have your team follow up with a sale just to make sure that the customer's happy in X number of days. You could set this up then to trigger something to happen inside Slack. We've also got Automator, Elementor, WooCommerce, all those kinds of things. So for this example, let's just say we're gonna choose something like Automator and see the options we have inside there. So you can see, we can just choose to do things like call a custom function, we can run a WordPress hook, or we can send data to a webhook. So you may be using services that have third-party webhooks, things like Thrivecart, things like InCharge, which is an email platform. You can connect that up to your webhook. So again, we can just click on send to a webhook, we can click on that, and then that goes through and asks us to fill out the relevant information about the URL for the webhook, the method, those kinds of things. Now this is probably a little bit more advanced for what you want to do. But this is just sort of showing you the basics of how you can build up these automations to run a range of different things. So it's really cool. And the other thing that is really good about this is you're not limited to one action based upon a trigger. So we may want to use this webhook and we may want to add them to active campaign and we may want to do something inside WordPress, inside WooCommerce, whatever itself. You can stack these actions on top of each other and the trigger will then trigger each of those different actions in turn and all those different things will fire off. And this is why working with automations with WordPress, with any kind of online tool is so incredibly powerful. And like I say, Uncanny Automator works great inside WordPress. Now you've got a lot more options inside here and you can see we can add new, we can categorize things, add tags. We can go in and take a look at our integration. So let me just quickly make sure that this is all saved and 
we're going to go over then and take a look at the integrations. Now, at the time of me recording this video, you can see some of the integrations are featured inside you. So we can connect this up to Buddy Boss. So again, you might want to sell a subscription, an annual membership subscription using WooCommerce, and then trigger something inside Buddy Boss. You can do that inside you. You might also want to, when they actually subscribe that in Buddy Boss, you want to join them up to Learn Dash, for example. So they subscribe to a course, and you want to enroll them in an email sequence. All of these things can be done through automations. This is a whole world of cool things that can be done just by using one simple trigger that goes off and does so many things in the background. And like I say, for my own example last year, I set up my first online webinar, sold it through Thrivecart. Thrivecart then subscribed anybody to my mailing list in In Charge, subscribed them to Demio, which is the platform that I use to do the webinar, and also did a few other bits and pieces behind the scenes, and all of that was automated. So all I needed to do was promote that particular webinar, and as soon as someone signed up to that and paid for it, all those other things went off in the background. And then email sequences are going out at regular intervals, people were being kept up to date, they were automatically enrolled in Demio in the webinar. I didn't have to do anything. It took me about an hour to set it up, and then everything just runs in the background, smooth and seamless. I absolutely love using automations. But as you can see, there's a lot of integrations inside Uncanny Automator. You've got Google Sheets, Instagram, Twilio, Twitter. So every time you posted something on your blog, you might want to automatically tweet that out. Well, you could use this to do exactly that. Just connect your Twitter account to Uncanny Automator, set your trigger, boom, it's going to run in the background. Absolutely brilliant. Now, so we've talked about how you can use Uncanny Automator. And I've kind of briefly talked about Zapier and Integromat and things like that. So let's just quickly take a look at those. Now, Zapier is probably the most well-known and widespread of all of these kinds of tools. So once you create an account, this kind of works in a very similar fashion. But the thing is with Zapier, you do have to pay. If you want to go beyond simple zaps, as they kind of call them, automations, you have to pay. So let's just take a look at what I was talking about earlier on. You can see that I've got different zaps set up inside your demo, in charge, mail, like Thrivecart and so on, and a number of zaps that go on with it. So if we open this up, you can see again, you've got various different things inside you to go on. So this was set up, so Thrivecart was gonna make a sale and then other things were gonna happen. So if you open this up, you can see this breaks things down. So you can see the connections inside you. And when you create a new zap, you basically do what we've just seen in Uncanny Automator. You set a trigger up, so the something happens, and then you set the actions up. The trigger sets the actions off, and then those actions run in the background. Again, I hope this is one of those things that's kind of making sense. It's Once you kind of get an understanding of how this works, it is very, very straightforward. Each of the different platforms have different ways of working. Zapier, I will say, is probably the easiest out of all of these platforms that requires the least technical knowledge. So if you are getting started with this and you want to use a tool outside of the WordPress ecosystem, Zapier will probably be the one I would recommend just to get your feet wet, to understand how the whole process works, and then take a look at ones that are maybe more cost effective. Public Connect is one that I just purchased recently. They semi-regularly run lifetime deals. They might still have that running at the time of this. I, I don't know. Do a search for Public Connect and you might well find they are running one. But they all work in a very similar fashion. You set up a trigger and then you set up the actions that the trigger sets off. So for example, if we come in and take a look at something like we create a new zap. So we'll create a zap. And once you're inside here, you can see this is where we go and set the trigger up. Now I've connected various different accounts. You can see we can search for apps and there are lots and lots of apps inside here. So let's just say Thrivecart. I can search for that, you can see Thrivecart is inside there, so I can select that. And once we do that, do that, it says, right, choose the event. Now the event is what happens to cause the trigger to go off. You just open that up and you can see there are a lot of different options. So you may have things like if someone refunds a course or a product that you've sort of sold via Thrivecart, you may want to drop them onto a different uh, sort of email sequence using some like active campaign, MailerLite, those kinds of things. Well, you can do that. So you can say when someone refunds something, and then you can go ahead and you can say what it is they refund. So a specific kind of product would have a specific email sequence, those kinds of things. That's how it kind of works. So then once you've done that, you go ahead and you choose your action. So we'll just continue on this. It says, right, choose an account. So once you've connected your account up, you can see I've got an account connected to this. Click on continue. So once you set an account up and you assign that to your 
Zapier account, public connect account, whatever it is. You then get access to that and it'll just have this synergistic link between the tool that you're using to create the automations and the actual tool that you're pulling that trigger from. So you just basically go optional trigger for any refund and you can enter your affiliate IDs. There's a whole range of different things inside you. I'm not gonna go too deep into this. Then we can set up the action. So let's just say that I wanted to drop them onto a mail sequence. I can say mail and light is what I want to use. And then you can see choose the event, create or update a subscriber, unsubscribe or remove a subscriber from a group. So we can say we want to create or update a subscriber and then you can continue to that and it'll go through what account you want to use and all those different things. I don't want to go into too much detail with this because this is more of an overview of automation, uncanny automator, and why you really need to be looking into this if you want to connect so many different platforms together. So that's a really simple overview of how you could use a tool like Zapier. Like I say, there's also Public Connect. This works in a very, very similar fashion, different interface, but still works on that trigger action kind of analogy. The same thing goes for Integromat, again, another one of those things. So if you are paying for any of these, I would recommend starting off with Zapier just because it is the easiest to get your head around and then take a look at tools like Integromat, Public Connect, any of these kinds of tools. Most of the time they are cheaper, but with that comes a little bit more of a steep learning curve over what you have with a tool like Zapier or Uncanny Automator in a lot of respects. But that's basically what I wanted to show you, how you can start to connect and make all of these tools work together pretty much seamlessly using any of these kinds of automation tools. But that's my kind of thoughts on it. Have you used automation tools yourself? Is this something that you've been looking to get into, you've been using for a while? Let me know in the comment section below. What tools do you use? How have you found them? Have you found some better than others? Let me have all the information about your experiences so I can kind of take a look at a bit more detail about these different tools. Now, speaking of the different tools, if you'd like me to focus on any specific one of these and give a much more in-depth detailed tutorial on how to use them, let me know in the comment section below. As always, all the links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.